time here. It's time I do a little update. So is 151? Yeah, 151, 97, 121, 118. All right. Massive. Yeah, I just press the thing. Horizontal, vertical? Uh, YouTube style. Okay. What's up, guys? So, uh, been a while since I posted anything. We are about two months, less than two months of work left uh, before Levon. Just kind of give an update on where I'm at. Do some singles tonight. Uh, so my workout routine right now is I'm basically doing this three times a day. I'm gonna maybe throw in some extra singles. So singles, rehab, singles, rehab, singles, rehab, and that's pretty much a day. Uh, I don't know if I'm going to be strong enough. You see the rip? You see the rip? It's almost like an immunization. Okay, let me see that thing. <laughs> <laughs> right? Okay, so I'm a bit tired. This is the last, last, uh, my last workout of the day. I've been pushing a bit. So 151 for pronator. That's oh, light. Easy. No problem. That's light. What am I going to do? I have to pace myself. Still early to peak. 97. 97. Abbreviated rise. It's not quite as high as it used to be, but. Yeah. No problem. No problem. Um, high cup multi. This one right now, I still got a ways to go with this one. I haven't really been doing this one too much, but I'll get it up probably fairly quickly. Yeah, it feels pretty light. This is 121.25 plus the apparatus, so probably like 126. Yeah, easy, easy. I'll definitely add there. Yeah. That's very, very easy. This one actually is a bit harder for you at the moment. High cup, low cup. cup. It's the first, it's switched now. Really? Yeah, it's the, fir it's the first training block ever that my high cup is above my low cup. I thought that wasn't true for Dennis. No, it's close, 137, 135. Yeah, it's very close, yeah. Close, yeah. So that's my singles. Right now I'm doing four. I'll probably up my singles. I'll probably add a press and some grip work, but I'm not doing it yet. Uh, so right now I do my rehab. I'm not going to film that because it's long and boring, but it's six rounds of work so that I'm not the one gassing out and needing an oxygen mask just to survive. You know, I wouldn't want that to happen. That'd be mighty embarrassing if I needed an oxygen mask between rounds. I would hate for that to happen me you know I gotta have that work capacity up it's one thing to be strong it's not a thing to be able to go the distance I don't know how many days but I'll see you soon move on <laughs> very, nice. <laughs> very nice he's scared <coughs> Liz that does feel those were all pretty clean though oh yeah the pronation yeah. looked super easy yeah. nice. his, his rise you saw how it's different than what we do right <laughs> it's lower yeah what is the main difference between the two lifts? I cheat with it. What do you mean? So, I kind of just, I, I've been having some, I just find there's a lot of inconsistency for me with the heavy post. Mm. Just when I mean inconsistency, I mean like mm -hmm. when I have the thing on my knuckle yeah. versus one millimeter this way or one millimeter that way, in that lift, it just makes a massive difference. So I just find that it's just some inconsistency. And um, and what I've kind of decided to do is just to simplify it a little bit and just to bring it down just slightly shy of the knuckle, but it's still definitely a rise, like I'm still rising. It's just not as <coughs> heavy on the rise. It's probably not quite as good of a lift, but it's pretty close and it lets me work my arm a little bit more 
and I'm just really precise on my rehab with it, so it still gets a ton of work. So, okay. Anyways, fair. <coughs> technique's better. Ours is better. It is better. Well, what what would you say is harder? Ours. Ours. Yeah. Okay. Without a doubt. So last time we were here, I believe, was a week prior to the Georgie match. Yeah. And so the, the blood flow is going to be pretty similar, right? Yeah. I don't remember exactly what I was doing last time. But yeah, the exercises. Ha oh, actually, the exercises. I added grip on the end. You added grip on I don't think I was doing grip. Um, you were doing elbow recovery, the elbow press down. Yeah. But, mm -hmm, but not grip, I don't think. I throw grip at the end now. Are you talking about just the band closing in? Uh, yeah. No, you were doing that. I was doing okay, but yeah. now I do it on the table. I think I was doing it with band before. Yeah, you were. Yeah. And are you still in the same methodology of as soon as it burns, stop? Yeah. Yeah, yeah I'm not going anywhere. It's just a, this is just pumping. Yeah. And uh, yeah, basically I just hit all my muscles. This is really to just build base, build base, build something to peak off of. You know, like. It's really indirect, like, you know, yeah. like, I do these, I add this work to my, to my, uh, my training, this, this work, and it just does, like, general damage and general fatigue to, like, all the arm wrestling motions, and it kind of just keeps me down, keeps me below the line, you know, base building so that when it is time, when it is time to peak, you know, I cut, I start cutting all this. My body is just used to doing the work, used to doing the work, and then and then I super compensate, right? That's the whole principle of peaking, right? Um, yeah. And I find that by doing this work, it also, in a way, fuels my ability to recover, and in that effect, it, it helps my singles. Yeah. Like it is definitely doing damage to my arm. Like I feel it, like my arm's always beat down and that's as a result of the singles and of this as well. But somehow this has like an, at least an equal regenerative effect as a damaging effect. It's kind of weird just because it pushes so much blood through the tissues. So it's really essential to do it. It's very monotonous. Uh, it's not sexy. It's not fucking that exciting. This is the dirty work. This is the dirty work, right. man. This is this is where this is where you show that you're a professional, you know. And you just you do you do the work that has to be done to maintain everything and just keep things moving forward. Can you have singles without blood flow or blood flow without singles? Yeah, you can yeah. <clears throat> if you're healthy. Would you rather have singles instead? Oh yeah. If you just had to pick one. Oh yeah, yeah, singles. Yeah. yeah. It's just the only thing is for me, they have to work together uh, to a certain degree, at least during periods. Mm. And that's just because uh, singles, uh, it's all about singles, right? Singles is a stimulus that I want my body to adapt to. I want my body to adapt to the singles. But the thing is, is, um, and, and when things are going right, yeah, just do singles. But the truth is, I'm, I'm 48, and I've ripped and torn just about everything, and I, I don't live in a perfect state of health. Yeah. Right. So I have to do, <clears throat> I have to do maintenance. Like I have a, I have a, a smash up derby car that I'm smash up derbying every weekend, and I have to do this tune up shit all the time. You know, um, and that's what it is. It's just tune up work and. Um, if you're younger, you maybe don't have to do as much, but I wouldn't say that either because you want to build your base even when you're young. Um, it's, it's a fine line, but really it's all about singles, and this is to heal you to do more singles. You'll know... This allows you to do more singles. This allows you to, this allows you to keep pushing because it's going to keep your joints healthy, and it's going to keep your uh, connective tissues from getting tendonitis. Like... Uh, you, tendonitis is just, it's a part of the sport. 
you know, like you cannot arm wrestle competitively and not run into tendon issues. Just because the force is so high, you're going to be so close to failure all the time in your training and in your competition. Like failure lifting, like getting ripped open, it's going to damage your your connected connective tissues. And so it's like you just you have to do it. You have to maintain these structures. So if you were somehow just so strong that you never got tendon issues, yeah, don't do rehab. Don't do rehab. Just do singles. <laughs> yeah. But if you could. Yeah, but I think the advice that I'm giving that person to maybe doesn't exist. Yeah. Maybe I mean maybe you know, maybe for parts of your career you can be like that. Like there will be parts of this training block when I'm like that. Like I will go days during this training block where I just do singles. Yeah. You know, when everything's working well and uh, and I'm, you know, I'm really pushing. Like I, I will, I'll have, I'm sure before I pull Levon in the, you know, 55 days or so that I have left to train. Is that the exact amount of days no, left? No, I don't know. It's so I'll probably stop on the first of April, like pushing. Like I'll still work, but I won't push. Okay, I will see. It's it's. I'll know when I get close. <clears throat> but so full month of full month of March, pretty much full month of February. Yeah. Two solid months of yeah. hard pushing. Yeah. yeah. And um, I mean, look, he's he's terrifying. Levon is Levon is the real deal. I got no illusions in my mind. I mean, last time he he tore me. I remember. I remember <clears throat> after the last time. I'm like, I never want to pull that dude ever again. I never ever want to arm. I don't. Need, it's not that I never don't want. I don't have the need. You know, like I get it. I get it. He's he's really freaking good, but. Slate's clear, you know, I really do feel that I'm like legitimate number two. I'd like to pull Vitaly. I'd like to pull Rivas. I'd like to pull Morozov. But the truth is, is <clears throat> Levon's next. And, um, and he has to be. Yeah. Has to be. Yeah. Yeah. So, so I'm here again. So, and, and I do feel like I'm stronger. So I'll tell you. <clears throat> This will be the high point of my career. Like I'm saying, like I will be at the highest level that I've ever been. Uh, I'm very sure of that. It's it's hard for me to say, you know, and I have to say it. I have to believe it. Um, but I do think that the numbers are certainly going to indicate that. And with my knowledge, I should be able to come into the match very healthy. You know, with all the therapies that I get now, I mean. Age is, yes, it's a factor, but I think I've mitigated it with all the medical assistance that I get. You know, thank you. Thank you, Vitacell. Thank you, Adil Khan. Um, thank you, Benoit. Um, you know, it's a big, big match. Very, very big match. How do you feel about where you are right now? I'm where I should be. Yeah. Yeah. Good. I'm, I'm right on track. I'm right on track. Uh, what I was hoping for was I was hoping to be maybe 3% or 5% optimistically better than I've ever been, which is awesome, you know. And you're already if, so close. I mean, if I can be like 3% better than my previous peak, that to me is, I'll, I'll be, I mean, that's great. <laughs> like, I think that yeah. I've had a. Like when I pulled Dennis, I was, I'm really happy with the form that I showed up. Georgie, I mean, when I pulled Georgie, I, I, there was no peak there. It was just, you know, I was coming down from Dennis and, uh, you know, I just basically showed up. So when you say previous peak, you're not talking about last time you faced Levon. You're talking instead when you faced Dennis. I'm talking like when I pulled, I was talking about when I pulled Georgie, right? Right, but your previous <coughs> real peak. You're saying 3% stronger than your previous peak. 3% 3, 3 stronger than Dennis. Right. <coughs> yeah. Dennis was a... So Dennis was the strongest that I've ever been. Yeah, measurably. Like with my gym, with my with these lifts that are real specific. And it showed on the table. I, I think so, yeah. I think I had a good day, yeah. So, I mean, and this is the first time in a while that I've had, you know, a little bit of time to actually come into a good peak. I mean, most of last year, I, I didn't have a lot of time between matches. I was basically competing. 
uh, you know, recovering, kind of getting myself back to a float, maybe, maybe making a little bit of distance, but not, like it was pretty active last year. I had a good peak for Ermies. Yeah. Um, had a good peak for Ermies, had a good peak for Dennis. Um, You've been in this sport how many total years now? 20 or something? Competitively 30. 30? Yeah. Uh, competitively 30, but I mean, I've been arm wrestling, you know, since I was a kid. I mean, of course, people always talk about, you know, this match is your, your biggest. This match is, I mean, is this truly the biggest match yeah, of your career? For sure it is. Like, I've had a lot of big matches, and it seems like, you know, the next one is always, you know, I guess they just keep getting bigger, really. But, yeah, um, but yeah no, I mean, Levon is, in my opinion, he's the, he's the, he's the best guy that I think that there's been in the sport, really. Like, uh, I I don't think... I think you could put him up against any champion from the past. And uh, he'd be the favorite. Yeah. And in your mind, when you think of April 12th, that day, the April man you'll... April 20th. April 20th, I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah. The man you'll face. Are you thinking at all about, you know, the, the wrist injury that he had? Is that not even a thought that crosses your mind, or...? Uh, not really. I mean, look, I'm fine with getting injured. Like, I really think it's, it's totally fine. Uh, I'm... I'm Quite truthfully, like if I lose, I mean, what are you looking? At? He's asking. No, I'm asking about, about him getting injured. Oh, about Levon's injury. Oh, yeah, yeah. Injury. oh yeah. No, not about you getting yeah, injured. It's not, it's not gonna. Yeah, okay, where's my head at? No, right? no, no. Yeah. I'm saying the fact that he got injured in the way that he did. The fact that there's been zero footage of him showing his cup. You know, is uh, that? I think he's fine. Yeah. I don't think that that guy is. Uh, uh, physically disabled in any way. I think you'll probably. I mean, he's 35. Is he 35? I'm not sure. I have to yeah, check that. He's 35. I'm sure he will be just fine. I'm sure he will be just fine. I'm sure he will be the strongest. I won't be surprised if he's the strongest he's ever been. That will. It'll surprise me if he's not. Yeah. Yeah. I imagine, you know, he's had a good break. And I think he probably takes me seriously. So I think he'll probably show up in astounding form. So, yeah. Yeah, it's going to be good. It's going to be good. Wow. Yeah. Do you, um, well, I mean, when it comes to King of the Table and all the matches you've had, yeah. has, it, has it changed kind of the format? Has it, has it made you improve the way you approach these matches now that you've had experience with King of the Table? Or do you feel like you rely on your overall experience? In a sense that this is an East versus West match, right? Last time you faced him was king of the table. Does that do anything differently? That's kind of my question. You know. The change of environment. Everything changed. The sport changed so much after, uh, after COVID. Yeah. You know, this new era of pay-per-view, you know, where it's the whole world. Yeah. Like, it, the level is higher now. This is a higher level because before the world was split. Yeah. You know, really, the best guys in North America were pulling WL. The best guys from Europe were pulling PAL. Right. And East versus West and King of Table has just has just squashed all that together now. And the level is crazy. So, um, and it being at East versus, look at to me, uh, look, at, I love both those organizations. To me, that I I'm just so thankful that we have them. So thankful that King and Table came along during that dark period and stepped in and and Engen. I mean, I don't think we can. I don't think the sport can ever give that guy the love that he deserves. Uh, what he's done for the sport. I mean, the cards that he puts together are absolutely insane. Like we are seeing the top of the sport, the top of the classes, every few months. And they get better and better. <laughs> yeah. It's wild, right? And because of that, it's just the level. It's just... It's like, what's going on over there? The dog wants in. Oh, the dog wants in. I wonder why. I should bring the camera over to this yeah, Violence. Violence in this house. <laughs> yeah. Um, I'll tell you, the culture is interesting. In Dubai, you mean? At these, at these events, oh, it's okay. interesting, what you know. Have we here? 
Is he all bloody? You are not coming in looking like that dog. <laughs> what, do, what do you mean the culture is different? Well, every league has its own culture. You know, like there's a certain feel to it. There's a certain amount of expectation. There's a certain energy that surrounds it. I'll tell you. Okay. East versus West is wild, man. That is wild. In the sense of what? Uh, you are going there for a fight, man. Yeah. I'll tell you, if you go to East versus West, you better be ready to fight. Yeah, man, it's serious, man. The energy at East versus West is great. Man, everybody is so, such a killer. Like, when you go to East versus West and you go, like, in the auditorium and you see the lineups of athletes and the people they've brought with them and the people who are there just kind of watching. All champions. Everybody. Wow. There was some of, like, to me, there was one thing, um, there was one thing, I, just, it was, I think it was Prudnik. I, I wanted to go just because I wanted to be in the room with all these people. There was Gary Goodrich, John Brzezink, uh, Levon Sagashvili, uh, Cobra Rhodes, uh, Engen Terzi. You know, yeah. I wanted, that's the picture I wanted. I well, wanted. you guys, was that the, the dinner place when you yeah, guys all had dinner? dinner yeah. place. Wow. Man, it was crazy. Like... There was like 40, 35 athletes, everybody, everybody, multiple Cheers, times, yeah. multiple yeah. time world champion, like everybody, like uh, yeah. pretty wild room to be in, yeah. Um, yeah, sports in a good place right now, yeah. yeah, and people are working hard, you know, like I'm working hard, um, people are becoming professional, very professional, very diligent with the work. You know, like, and it's great. Like, I mean, for young athletes like yourself, you know, and Auden, and you know, the sport just keeps growing and getting bigger, and you know, and not just like uh, from an attention and a YouTube and immersion, like all that. No, like the sport, like guys can go and they can make it as athletes. What is it about Auden when when you look at his? absolutely unworldly work ethic that he has at such a young age where do you think that stems from i mean i don't know i don't know but that's crazy yeah his uh like, I, I mean look i know i've been committed to a few things in my life but the level of commitment that he's reached with this sport is yeah i know it's it's uh it's scary it's it's very rare yeah what Adam has uh and i mean look at i i don't i shouldn't speak too much he's my he's my son and you know i'm very proud of what he's doing um, but yeah, if I'm to assess him, I mean, he's not, he's not making many mistakes. Yeah. He's really not like, and he's got a, he's got a long vision and he's just at the start. Yeah. He's right at the beginning. That's what's but, so I mean, crazy. I already feel him at, at 19. I mean, I mean, I wouldn't have stood a chance with him myself at 19, not a chance, not a chance. Um, but I mean, I even feel like now when I train with him, like I can feel him. I can feel him. It won't be long before he's starting to give me problems. His hands are changing, you know. Yeah, you want to talk about that thumb size? Yeah. What was that about? Like, um, the trajectory is, is steep. It's it's real. Like, um, it's, you know, so much people think, like, what makes a person do this or what makes a person do that, you know. Yes, there's gifts, but, man, you do the work. And there's levels, right? There's levels. Some people think they're working hard. They're like, oh, I'm hitting the gym a couple times a week. Man, if you... There's levels to obsession, you know? Yeah. Like, you want to get really crazy about stuff, like, you just never stop. You never, you never, ever stop. You never take your eye off the target, and you just continually march toward it, and... People who do that are very dangerous. Very dangerous. Who do you think, uh, outside of uh, obviously your family, in the sense of you look abroad at all the arm wrestlers, who's somebody whose work ethic really inspires you, or just you know you're very you respect the work ethic that that person has? Um, you know, let me think. Somebody who you think of, and you're like, yeah, he's training right now. No question. Well, I'll 
tell you, I, I, I do have a lot of respect for Dennis. Yeah. Yeah. Armies. But the, a lot of the guys at the top. These top guys, yeah, yeah. A lot of the guys at the top are like that. Um, but there's levels, you know, because it's not just what you do when you're training. It's what you're doing when you're not training. Like when you're sitting on your couch, when you're when you're driving your car, like does your mind wander? Yeah. Do you think about other things, or are you still thinking about it when you're eating your supper? Like, are you still thinking about it when you're going for a walk? You mm-hmm. know, it's these yeah. people who just never put it down. It gets they're just difficult. They're just difficult. They're obsession, man. Obsession is a powerful thing. You know, Arden and I, uh, we bet on the Bacho versus uh, Reno match. I got Reno. I got Bacho. Do you really? I do. I do. You think the hand is going to be a problem? I think the hand and the inside game is going to be a problem. I think the hook's going to be a problem. I think the speed, uh, no, but I think... It's interesting. It's a great match. It's a great match. I just... I have no idea. Look, I got no idea. I just... Arden seems very confident. And look, I love Reno. Reno's I think incredible. He's, I know he's incredible. That's the thing. That's why I don't think it's going to be an easy match for Bacho, but I just... The hand... The power Reno's the raw press, side. Man. The press is fucking scary. Like he can drop that thing anytime. He's you know, like But people, people who have such a strong hand usually give flop wrist pressers a tough time. You don't think so? I think that people who have strong arms give flop wrist pressers a hard time. And I would say Bacho's a really fucking strong. Bacho's arm. really strong everywhere. How, how did it feel when you gripped up with him uh, that one? He's incredible, man. I mean, that was, what, eight, he's nine in, months he's ago? He's incredible. He's a complete monster. Yeah, these two are the brightest stars of the youth division, okay? Like, there's nobody in my mind that sticks out more than these two. And the youth kid, yeah. No, like, Bacho and Reno are the two young, super, super killers. And Re- uh, Reno's got a much bigger frame, doesn't he? Or I bigger. think so. I think Reno is like I, I've heard he's like two forty ish when he relaxes. So, oh. and 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 I think that Bacho is more like two. And they're both fucking nineteen or something. It's crazy, man. It's fucking crazy. Yeah. To be anyway. So I don't know, man. I think look, it's a good match, but I I think Reno is. Um, I think he's too versatile. Look, at, I just think that that press is really dangerous. Yeah. And the thing is, if it's close anywhere here, his ability to drop that thing is going to be problematic. It's going to be problematic. I don't know. Look at <laughs> It's a really good match. It's really good. It's really, yeah. really good. Because yeah. these guys will see a lot of in the future. I mean, oh, yeah. This is really just the start. Oh, yeah. But I would say Reno's got a lot more experience, doesn't he? He's I put a lot more both, tournaments. Well, yeah, definitely. Definitely more competent. But, you know... I mean, he's in he's in Georgia. He's pulling with the Georgian team, probably. I mean, and since he was like five, I guess. Right. Like, yeah. So, like, it's hard to measure. It's hard to measure. How do you see? This is a very interesting match for me. I really like seeing uh, Ermes versus Dennis. I think Ermes gonna kill him. Kill him. I think wow. Ermes gonna fuck him up. 